Hey everybody, it's Kathy, and today I want to share with you 10 things that I stopped buying to improve my style as a 55 year old woman. I believe that we should look and feel our best in our clothes, so it's important to me to invest in better quality pieces that will last. We all have different budgets and beliefs and wants when it comes to clothing. I'm happy to have a more minimal wardrobe, but some people might want to have a new outfit every week. You don't have to agree with me, but this is my list and I would love to hear what some of the things are that you have stopped buying to improve your fashion. So let us know in the comments. The first thing that I stopped buying was fast fashion. I'm not going to get into the politics of fast fashion and how we know it's bad for the environment, etc. But I believe in investing in the best quality of clothing that I can at the time, especially for basics because basics are so important because they set the tone for our outfit and our mood. So if you are on a budget, I highly recommend that you start investing in one or two pieces a season, say in good bras, because you can have a really crappy bra on with a really nice top and it's still not going to look as good if you had the proper fitting bra that was adjusted every day for your body, adjusting the straps, and then it's going to make that top look a lot better. I have found that fast fashion t-shirts and such, they do not last after a couple of washes. They lose their shape, they get boxy, you know, sometimes they'll shrink if you put them in the dryer, and then they'll end up with mysterious holes in the belly area. That happens all of the time. So I try to invest in better quality t-shirts or long sleeve tees that are going to last me a few seasons. And in the long run, it's paid for itself. You can always find sales. You can sign up for like Rakuten where you can uh, get money back for shopping. I did a whole video on how you can afford quality clothing when you feel like it's out of your budget. So you might want to go watch that video. I have lots of tips and tricks in there. I never pay full price for anything. I love a good sale. And I know for a fact that I can get a good quality Pima cotton t-shirt at Talbot's for about $30 on sale when regularly they might be 60 or $70. And, you know, you can go to a fast fashion store and get a t-shirt for $10. And if it only lasts you for one season, that $30 investment of the better quality shirt is a much better investment, in my opinion. You can also find gently used and new with tag clothing at thrift stores on Poshmark, on eBay. There are a lot of people that just love to shop and they put stuff in their closet and they never end up wearing it. So that's also a great resource if you want to buy better quality clothing. Go check out your thrift stores or online on Poshmark. Just save up and buy yourself one quality piece because you deserve to look and feel your best. The next thing that I stopped buying was anything that I had to talk myself into buying. I have the philosophy now that I'm older that if I look in the mirror and I'm not quite sure if I like what I'm wearing, it's not coming home with me or it's not, well, I already am home. I shop most of my stuff online. It's not making its way into my closet. If I immediately don't feel connected to that piece of clothing where I feel confident, where I feel like I look good in this, then it's really not for me and I'm better off to send it back and keep looking for something that will wow me because at this point in my life, I just want clothes that look good on my body and that make me feel good when I wear them because from personal experience as a plus size woman, I know that whenever I wear clothing that's sloppy looking or like way too baggy for my body, that can really affect my mood and it can make me not wanna, you know, make healthy eating choices or dress nice or just makes me feel kind of like a, a slob and kind of lazy. Whereas if I put an effort in, I'm not getting dressed to the nines, but like the outfit that I'm wearing today is dressy casual and I feel productive today because I, you know, put something on and I felt like I'm going to accomplish something today because originally I really didn't have the energy to fill in five videos. And this is number two of five that I have on my list to do today. So if I was still in my pajamas, you know, I probably wouldn't be filming my video. So my point is, even if you're retired, if you work from home, 
every day just get dressed for yourself in something that makes you feel proud. So the next thing that I quit buying is distressed jeans. As somebody with a very short inseam, I do not want to bring attention to my thighs. Uh, so anything that has holes in it or rivets or embellishments, I avoid. I just go for a plain pant just so, you know, I create the length in my lower body so I can look a little taller. I just find personally that distressed jeans, yes, they might look good on some people, but it's not the look that I'm going for on myself. So what is your feeling about distressed jeans? Do you wear them or do you stay away from them? Life is too short to wear uncomfortable shoes. Many years ago, I had plantar fasciitis. I had it for about a good year and it is so painful. If you've never had it, but trust me, you don't want it. It hurts, like you're constantly in pain when you're walking. Because of my job, I was a dairy farmer. I always worked in rubber boots or steel toe work boots, both of which basically have no support and are very flat. So after years of working in the barn, you know, on cement floors, wearing those types of shoes, I refuse to wear uncomfortable shoes now. And I also am not comfortable enough to wear like stilettos. I'll wear like a nice block heel, but because I didn't have a job where I wore high heels, I'm not comfortable in them. And I just look so strange walking around in them. If I can find a nice sturdy block heel, well, that's a different story. But there are so many beautiful options out there today for lovely flats. And one of my favorite places to buy shoes is Talbot's. I am super picky when it comes to pretty much anything. And as somebody that has a flat foot, I need support underneath the foot. And also I have a wide foot, but all of Talbot's shoes so far, I just buy them in the normal width and they fit me fine. I'm a size 10. Another shoe brand that I really love is Bionic because they do have like an orthotic built into them. So it's not costing me five or $600 to go to the podiatrist to get a pair of orthotics. And I recently discovered on Amazon, and I will link them below, that Vionic actually sells inserts that you can put in your shoes. So if you have shoes that you have now and you already love them, well, there's no sense buying another pair, maybe invest in a pair of these orthotics. And oh my gosh, they work wonders. I went to Italy with my daughter last year and we walked and walked. Some days we walked, I think it was like 12 miles. I was just exhausted at the end of the day, but my feet weren't tired. And I had slipped in these Bionic inserts into my old pair of running shoes that I wear whenever we're traveling. And my feet felt great for the whole trip. So they were totally worth the investment. The next thing that I quit buying was anything that is itchy. I've gotten into Talbot's cashmere sweaters in the past year. They have lovely cashmere. And like I said, they often have sales 40, 50% off. So if you see one of those sales, you know, snag yourself a cashmere sweater, but I'm going to give you a word of caution. If you are like me and you like full length sleeves, I live where it gets really cold in the winter time. So I don't like three quarter length sleeves. But I get it, they're more flattering, shows off, you know, your wrist, the thinnest part of your body, shows off your bracelets, your watch, whatever. But for me in the winter, comfort and being warm comes first. So I want sleeves that I can push up. So I bought, I believe it was their Audrey cashmere sweater because it only has three quarter length sleeves and I didn't read the whole description. Lots of times I don't read directions, but you know, that's just me. But I put this sweater on and I could not wait to get it off. It was so darn itchy. So it went back. I have since went and bought another v-neck long sleeve cashmere sweater from Talbot's. No problem whatsoever. So I cannot stand any clothing that is itchy. And whenever I'm wearing a sweater, I don't want to have to wear like a long sleeve t-shirt under it because with hot flashes, you know, I don't want to have to be peeling off my clothes in the winter time. So definitely life is too short to be miserable and wearing anything itchy. If you have not subscribed to my channel, I really wish that you would consider doing so. I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers and by you subscribing, it would really help my channel to get noticed and grow. And if you're enjoying this video, be sure to give it a like. The next thing that I quit buying was fancy dresses. 
because we never really go anywhere where we have to dress up unless we go on a cruise and cruising has changed so much recently that people don't even bother getting dressed up and you don't even have to go to the formal dining room if you don't want to. So lots of times now whenever we travel we try to do carry on only and I'll just take an all black or an all navy outfit and I'll wear that. You can add some bracelets, some earrings, maybe a scarf just to make it look a little more fancy. But fancy dresses, unless I have a particular wedding coming up or something to go to, I've stopped buying them because even though I wish I could wear them and I had an occasion to wear them, I'm not going to like put a fancy dress on and, you know, scrub toilets and vacuum the house in it. But if you have an occasion to wear a fancy dress, you know, that's wonderful. I wish that I did, but sadly I don't. But if you're like me and you don't want to invest in fancy clothes that you're never going to wear, I know that there is an option out there where you can actually rent fancier clothes, like really good brand name clothes. I don't know how it works, but I know that it does exist. So that might be something that you want to look into as well. The next thing that I've quit buying is anything that I cannot make an outfit out of like more than once. So I have to be able to make an outfit two or three times with the one article of clothing. I have bought things in the past where, you know, it might be like a very out there top, but it doesn't really go with anything else in my closet. And what I'm finding now that I'm paying more attention to how I look and feel and want to dress in my body, like I'm now discovering what my style is as I've lost 20 pounds, that I really am lacking in just really good basics in my closet. And I feel that I usually wear two colors, either navy or black. I always wear that on my bottom because that's the part of my body that I want to have fade away in the background and then I'll wear color up top. What I I'm not doing anymore is maybe buying a pair of pants that you know is plaid that I probably would never wear anyways like yes they look great on somebody that is a size four but the way I am right now I'm not comfortable wearing that so that just stays at the store. So I'm really trying to be more thoughtful and meaningful whenever I buy clothing that I would rather have, you know, less clothing, maybe just buy one sweater instead of three less expensive ones. And that's why you'll always see me wearing the same thing. And I think that is a great testament that if you see me wearing the same thing often, it's because I truly love that product. So I don't just buy stuff just for the sake of buying it because it's wasteful and it just doesn't interest me anymore because I think as we age, we just want to become more thoughtful in our clothing and just everything. And we want to make sure that what we're wearing reflects our personality and that gives us the confidence that we sometimes need to uh, have a boost with. The next thing that I've quit buying or trying to buy is a blazer. Although I do have an exception that I'll get to in a bit. I for years have tried blazers and they just do not look good on me. I don't know if it's because I have like a petite frame, I'm five foot four. I don't know if it's because like I'm big up top because I'm an apple body shape. I have just not found a blazer that doesn't end up making me look like a linebacker and just like it's not a good look on me. So I had kind of given up and decided, okay, Kathy, we're done with blazers. I guess the better option for you is a sweater. So Spanx had their 20% off Black Friday sale on a couple of weeks ago. And I thought, I've had my eye on this blazer. I'm going to try it. What do I have to lose? The only thing I'd have to lose is just send it back. And I know it's going to cost me $15 to return it. In the U.S., I think they charge you $8.95 or $10 returns are not free. Shipping to you is free, but take your measurements because their sizing chart is spot on. If you follow their chart, you won't have an issue. So I know a year ago they had a more fitted blazer, which is what I was wanting, but I didn't buy it last year. But I thought, well, I'm going to try this one, but it's more of an oversized blazer. And I thought generally oversized blazers when you're plus size, it's not a good look, but I really like how this blazer looks on me. And I'm showing you how I styled it the other day. It has shoulder pads, which is helpful whenever you are um, plus size because it balances out the proportions. But I just really like this blazer. 
and I'm going to do an in-depth video about it. I don't want to talk too much about it, but in case you are somebody like me that has been on the hunt for a blazer and you've kind of given up on them, you might want to check this out. So I'm happy with this blazer and I don't intend right now to purchase any more because really I don't have a need for it. Like if I was working in an office, then yes, I probably would need a few. But for now, I'm just happy with this Sphinx blazer. The next thing that I quit buying is clothing that is too big for me. And I have been guilty of this in the past where I just like to wear, you know, big, comfy, cozy clothes and I'm at home. So, you know, who's going to see me? But then I might pop out somewhere still wearing those clothes and, you know, I'll see somebody that's nicely dressed and then I kind of feel like I look frumpy. I'm really having to learn as I'm losing weight. I have lost 20 pounds out of 50 that I'm on the weight loss journey to lose that the way that I see my body now in the mirror has not caught up to the 20 pounds that I have lost. So the other day I just had to like measure my whole body over again and I was surprised that I've lost inches because when I still look at myself in the mirror I don't see those changes. So I think it's going to take time for the brain to catch up with the scale. And what I have to be mindful of is take my measurements and when I'm ordering clothing order for my measurements now because I've actually went down two sizes. I now wear either a 1X or an XXL in regular. Now just in the petite line that usually you know goes to a 14 or a 16 I still I can't fit in there. My chest is too big, shoulders are broad but eventually we'll get there probably two or three months but yeah you do not want to wear clothing that is way too big for you. You may feel that it's more flattering, you know. I would say, okay, well, if I'm wearing this top, it's bigger, it's not gonna show like my muffin top, but it actually ends up making me look a lot bigger than what I am. So I'm better off to buy clothing that just flows over my body and fits me for the body that I have now because I really believe that um, if you can find a way, even if you have to shop like at a thrift store or Poshmark, I truly believe it is better to always move down in sizing to the size that you are now because what I am afraid of is if I continue to wear clothing that is a size too big for me, first of all, it's going to look too big, but also it's going to make me lazy and I'm going to feel sloppy and I'm not going to, you know, see the changes in my body and then, you know, that's going to make me not want to eat healthy. So for myself, that is something that I am practicing, something that I'm still working on, and you know, it's something that you might want to do as well. Now, the next thing that I stopped buying is anything that is on sale. And like I said, I only shop for clothes that are on sale, but I'm talking about like, if you go to a store, you know, they have a clearance section. I've really never been somebody that has bought stuff from that because I'm not really, well, I wasn't a really big shopper. Like to go to a mall or anything, I much prefer online shopping. And when I'm online shopping, I'm shopping for things that I really need and want right now. I had a friend that she was constantly shopping. Like every day she'd go to the mall and every day would come home and, you know, show her purchases. And oh, it was, you know, she scored a, a really good deal. But the stuff would end up at the back of her closet and she would never wear it. So then that ends up at a thrift store for somebody else to buy. So I'm not like one of those people that gets a high, like feeling like I got a sale, you know, in the clearance bin. But I know that a lot of people do have that. However, I have in the past, you know, went to a store, tried something on. And because it was a sale, you know, buy one, get one, I would fall into that trap but I really didn't need the extra one. And is it really a deal because you still gotta pay 50% and you were only planning on buying the one thing to start with? I am really thoughtful and if I'm buying something, I will wait till Talbot says a 30 or 40% off sale. I'm usually looking at their new arrivals so I can show that here on my YouTube channel. I am also very conscious how am I going to make two or three outfits out of this piece of clothing? So that's just something that has helped me becoming a more thoughtful shopper. So if you've enjoyed my video, please subscribe. I will link my ultimate Amazon Christmas gift guide here in case you are still in need of some inspiration for last minute gifts. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.